we offer you honor. We bless your name, Lord. We ask you to help us, Father, to settle our hearts, settle our minds, to set all the distractions in the world aside, Father, so that we can hear from you. We ask that your spirit be with us, Lord. We have receptive hearts to hear you, Lord, to see you, to understand your ways, your operations. To grow in truth, Lord. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. We'll continue the series called The Seven Spirits of God. We briefly mentioned a few imageries about the teaching which based on Isaiah 11, 1 to 2 verses mentioning the seven spirits of God. We also he invoked this imagery to describe that the work of the seven spirit is that sevenfold, the same spirit assumption to impart the life or the mind of Christ in the natural man when he's born again to be a spiritual son of God. We're mentioning the first imagery would be a tree for life and right? so a tree from a seed to become a full fledged tree and fruitful tree that able to produce and that implies the power of God's kingdom that's increase of this kingdom to no end whereas is appended to the teaching of the discipleship of internal life. <coughs> in Christ's ministry. The second image we invoke it is a newborn baby need a spiritual milk and solid food to become a full standard spiritual son. Son Ben in Hebrew speak one is a fully capable represent the name and the standard of his father. A rightful heir if you will can take tour and take charge of God's business as a son of God. That's also implied as we go with it today later on called the concept of first fruits tree and firstborn. Okay, so bang is the image of firstborn. But this is a process of increasingly to become a matured son of God is the most repeatedly mentioned in apostolic teachings in the New Testament, but abundantly revealed in different prophetic revelations in the Old Testament, whereas Isaiah 11 gives uh, almost a full picture of his restoration. As a son of David, as a son of David, a root to set, and right, can become indeed a banner. Banner there is a standard, is a king's standard, by the way. That is an invoke imagery when the art of the Lord leading the march for God's people through the leadership of Moses, the staff of Moses will shroud the ground where the ark needs to be settled and where the Standard set, then all the tribes will rally and organize themselves, tabernacle with God in the wilderness. It's a pattern, fast forward, become the pattern of Mount Zion, become a perpetual foundation for God's house. And the kingdom of David become a real kingdom in circle setting, but yet still a precursor of the spiritual in gathering God's people to become a kingdom people. But there is all there, there's a government, if we will. There is a Yinsu force, a cultural center. And that's the word I want to evoke into this session when we talk about the spirit of lordship. 
So God rests upon someone wizard than some tabernacle place or temple. He chooses to manifest his will, his culture film, through uh, endowed people or anointed people, a group people in this case is a priesthood, right? So then through that priesthood, the law or the will of God, the culture of God, will emanate to the four corners of the earth a perpetual to generation to generation. Last time we I'm not so sure where I landed on the notes I think at the village of it. But turn with me to the beginning of the notes. We talk about the word rest. The topic today is continuation of the spirit of lordship. Lord is Adonai, it's Jehovah actually in this case, is a euphemism of Adonai, the Lord, whose name not supposed to be announced actually. So that's why they call the euphemism, the Lord, you see. And it's uh, everywhere in the Bible. So, but rest, I quoted the many scriptures here in, in the Old Testament, especially to highlight the concept of rest. But in the beginning of the notes, I give a summary of the word rest. Let's repeat it here. Rest is also a very important concept here. It has to, as we to do with anointing, that is to officiate and place someone in the ministry of the Lord in a holy or special capacity. There's a loaded word. Um, so we can see in the Old Testament there are rest as benefits of rest, rest from trouble. That means you're not posed, challenged by others anymore. Instead, rest from work. You're not rest from work in the sense that you're not working but your work is not labor of no result. Seed will permanently reproduce itself and bear fruits in due season. It's working, growing all the time, but the rest from his work means it's not struggling to slide, uh, to slide in a land of thorn thistles anymore. So that's a good picture to think about it. God's garden picture is restoration, as in Isaiah 11, handed prophetically there. On the month of the Lord, some culture, original plan for all creation is restored through the reign of Christ Jesus, the righteous kingdom, is it? The righteous reign. Whereas we are to be endowed with the same mind, the same operation, amen, as his representation. It's a reproduction, if we will. It's a company sons to become the church as a priesthood under the head of Christ Jesus to minister this culture. Whereas all creation are growing for the freedom or the restoration of its original glory. Whereas the design of God for all of them will be restituted. So, rest. So you can see it's a planting a place on a position, okay? We mentioned the ark, the altar, and the holy items in different Old Testament uh, scriptures will use the word rest. The ark rested, the altar rested, the bread rested, even the garments put down called rested. So there is the positioning or appointment of an individual, an individual, a company priest before the ark of the Lord, serving before the ark of the Lord um, thereof, is also called appointment and it's a placement, that word called rest. So these people are rested with God, entered into God's rest. Hebrew, the book talking about that. We try to enter into God's rest. It's not merely from a human perspective to not have strife or challenges 
or this peace, rather to attain unto the finalization of your destiny and placement the Son of God in his household, in the internal kingdom even. And that's always the picture. So when this readied of temple on the tabernacle is a made holy, sanctified unto God, that is, then a priesthood, a holy priesthood set apart for God, and holy sacrifice offered on the altar, and the way to the ark is opened, like the daily atonement, and God will show up. That picture quickly reminded us in the wilderness, the time of picture of Moses, where God began to show up, consumed as a holy fire, on the altar, the sacrifice is holy people in the wilderness. The second picture will see Solomon dedicate the temple. The similar thing happened. God, glory filled the temple. Even the priests are not capable to minister thereof. Now, so we can see this amazing picture. God rested among his people. He's pleased with them. Their sins, their shortcomings, their past departures and discrepancies with God's will is forgiven. More than they reconciled back to God as a worshiper, now he's pleased with them. He said, you are the perfect people. You're the people I want to love, I want to bless, and I want to dwell with. So this prophetic imagery or the desire of God's heart through the ages, his own yearning longing that he want holy people, he want to be their God, and now he has it. And he will dwell himself, but he dwell there and many self known or manifest in their midst. That's concept of rest. God rest among the people. Now in the two capacities, let on implied also in lordship. One is a king is a kingdom. Finally, is all enemies subdued, all his domains are under his proper garment, his righteousness, his wisdom, his ordinances are perfectly applied and um, beneficiary appropriated in the land that we see God is a perfect king, right? So our Lord is a king of peace and righteousness. Then a father, as a, when seated at the head of the table, is a father in his household. I'm not, again, I want to remind you, don't conceptualize in modern family, rather look at a, a great father like Abraham. I have many sons get together, but Jacob and in the old age. So those are shallow pictures or fractured pictures history, but there is a desire God wants to be the head of his family, and that family includes many members, that are many household, in a sense. So we see God first wants to be the sovereign over a kingdom. That's his governmental capacity. The second one to be a, a true father to many sons, be the head of the family. So we see the foundation has to be laid. Ephesians talk about the apostle prophet that met to lay this foundation. In essence, met to impart these two cultures. Actually, for reference point, turn with me. The scriptures Ephesians. Let's first look at one. In 19, actually from 18, allow me to read. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling. Again, his calling, you can understood as individually or as we should as a people. A people is a pleasure. As a his glory. What are the riches, the glory of his inheritance in the sent is the holy ones? 
The world is a passing green is the power towards us who believe. These are in accordance with the working of the mind, the strength is the mind, which is brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead, that seated him at the right hand in where? The heavenly places. And you have the blessings, all the blessings, and those who believe him in the heavenly places. So that's in concept the church on earth sitting in heaven. Am I? So, yeah. Then continues mentioning this. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that can be named, or that is named, sorry. Now, the only in this age, but in the one to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet, the garment of capacity now, and give him as a head lordship over all things to the church. And we, church, are member of this one body, which is a body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Fast forward. Speaking of all this people, or this culture is built up. All this glory is to be rested when God approved as a suitable for his purpose. And that is through apostolic ministry. I'm trying to find out where I am. So turn with me to two chapter now, the same book. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you 17? So you've been reconciled, is this hope, is the rest? That in 17, said he came and preached, as Christ Jesus, preached the peace to you who are far away. And peace to those who were near, this is where the standard reached. And we are to rally in the spirit who are heavily in gathering as a spiritual people in the spiritual household. And through him, we both have our access in one spirit to the Father. If you're to the Father, obviously implied, you are his offspring. 19 said, and then you're no longer stranger aliens. So you change identity, strangers. Uh, um, I'm not sure. Strangers is, what's your translation look like? Uh, same to you. Same to you. Okay, foreigners any, and aliens. Huh? Foreigners. Foreigners. See, foreigners is a nationality in a sense, right? So, yeah. Well, it's a nationality other than, mm -hmm. you know, other yours. Yeah. yeah, aliens are race, right? So, yeah, which is why we belong, which race we belong. So, which family belong? <coughs> so, aliens, foreigners, strangers is a construct of governmental in a sense. To do with a, a garment. It means that you're not mm -hmm. uh, native. Native, okay. Native to that country. To that country. To that so country or yeah. Yes, yes. I like it. Aliens is more a family contract, a people contract. So, anyway. But you are fellow citizens in change with that identity, change the peace, preached, believed, changed to you to be a son to your Heavenly Father. Something changed to you. In turn, you become an heir, for heir to something. You are fellow citizens with the saints, with the holy ones, and for God's hustle. So you change. But well, that means you're going to learn two orders. It's one order, but separated in a sense of operation. Right? So, yeah. so you learn to culture in a sense. And in this slide, the efficient term is the concept of grace. Grace God meant to impart this into you, to give you the wisdom, the manifold wisdom. How manifold? Manifold wisdom, God. You're supposed to mature in this mind, okay? Have the full knowledge of Christ Jesus, then become a, a full-fledged son, just like he is, if you are allowed to mature. If God permit, we mature. So in 20 is a highlight I want to point to how it been built on the foundation to be passed on the prophets. 
is a foundation obviously cannot be imparted, ministered, married by head knowledge. It has to be through the entrust anointing or grace that allotted as God economy from above or dispensations grace from above to make sure that you are built into a heavenly reality. Whereas his kingdom, his household functions one, will operate perfectly according to God's plan. Christ Jesus being the head of the high priest of this order as his ministry. Quiet, him, quiet himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole building, that including you as a sons, being fit together is a growing fit in is one. Growing into is another. Until you fit in, you can't grow. So how you grow? On the foundation to fit in first. Something I okay, can continue alarm of a missing uh, and distortion of modern Christianity or popular Christianity in misrepresenting those things. So you baptize into a body, you fit into a body, and that cannot be done without the proper order from heaven. Whereas a pastor ministry is implied as a contest and the vehicle for them to be actualized on earth in heaven. So that being said, it, so you can't bypass the foundational or beginning phase things. Now I want to use the word foundation expand a little bit. Foundation like a seed. You can't grow a tree without a seed. You can't build a house without a foundation. You can't bypass certain things to become something. There's something I think more than the Christian and continue ignore this effect. It's a word fact that it, without the pastor in the ministry, you can't be a true Christian. Because you are not in the church in full flesh order or capacities. Regardless of thank you are, uh, how mentally you understand the man hallelujah, God will not acknowledge it. God in heaven please you don't think as a soul. He has divine order, he has a protocol, he has a living reality. We worship God in truth and in what? In spirit. What truth? Very interesting to dig it out. What does that mean for you as a Christian? What truth? The set of doctrines or the operating divine reality God ordained from the foundation of the world to put in place for the church to build up and engage the people into his household. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't do without. <laughs> it's not that we want to promote apostle ministry in the wrong light. I'm just saying that read the Bible, a pray God ministry of the church to us. We must restore the ancient foundation. The foundation of being put the rooms, oftentimes fractured and ignored. Therefore, we have a church of God's people in disarray because what? There's a fundamental order. Fundamental orientation of a spiritual formation individually as well as corporately are missing. Missing. So, but with you, and hopefully many God's people in this day's hour, will have the capacity and willingly to be restored as God's proper people. And then at least strive to be that better representation of his way in his culture. So when you grow into a you grow into a a holy temple in the Lord where he will rest in whom you also are being built together to a dwelling God in the spirit. So it's a spiritual operation. Back to this word rest. In Christ's life we see the restoration happened in a perfect way. All right? So the continuation today will say the restoration, the notes the title is the restoration of the glory. The honor sonship is the kingly capacity and priestly capacity. Now I have many scriptures on the kingly and I don't want to expand. I encourage you due to the time 
uh, I will encourage to read with a careful examination to ponder on the theme, the kingdom. But let's look at this one to sample for. Okay, I think I already told this, but uh, it's good to review. Isaiah 9 chapter of the kingdom. That's 9 leading to 11. Okay, so break the lines. The contest Christ's life, be one able to righteously judge matter in God's affairs or God's business. As a son of David, raised out to be a son of God, is from this appointment, this placement, this resting. So in 9 chapter, in 6, I believe, in 7, it says, Unto us a child is born, and the son is a given. Given, I use the word called appointment or designation. And the garment, that's a kingly, will rest on his shoulders. Compare this to uh, uh, Psalm 110, you'll see a better picture. And his name, and the Psalm 2, you know, I install my king among them, the kingship. His name will be called, now in this kingship, in this governmental capacity, he's a title or named as a such. Wonderful chance counselor, Mighty God, eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Four names means four operations, four faces of his capacities, four facets rather of the capacities. Very interesting, huh? Yeah. I don't need to expound, am I? <laughs> Give some hands. Okay. There will be no end. To the increase of God, the peace. With the time of the peace, it's a sort of possibly discipleship is increased. The pattern that you increase in the church is a given. It's more than number gain, but it actually an increase in maturity. Grow into it. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, then on the throne of David over his kingdom established, upholded with justice and righteousness from then on the forever, this age and in the age to come. The zeal of the Lord hosts will come with this. That being said, so we can see kingly. Priestly, we can study Isaiah 61. I think uh, I did that with you as well. Now you can look up also, the Passover, the whole Passover teaching is a concentration on priestly entrustment. Okay, priestly equipment and priestly entrustment. I really highly advise you to look at it from a different point of view. Okay, come with me to John 14 chapter. From the very beginning, God handed. However, we often use this in a poor or shattered context were much disregarded the new covenant establishments and the equipping of the apostle to be a royal priesthood. John 14 chapter, in the beginning, in two now said, Ye my father's what? Household culture, okay? Family culture. Hosts a mini dwelling places. And that picture, I hope we don't think of uh, grandpa have a good table, okay? So, it's a temple picture. <laughs> it's a temple. So the priests have their portrait there. Look at Ezekiel, you understand more. Ezekiel speaking the future temple. The priests have their portraits. So, and this uh, two disciples with him did in Matthew speaking about they have 12 thrones to judge 12 tribes, am I? So, so the same thing. So, that being said, I want to move on to so we can see the priesthood from a one son become a high priest. That all the sons are supposed to be a high priest, not just any priest, okay? It's a high priestly calling. It's very interesting to understand Jesus Christ the head of a high priest. It's not the head of just any priest, okay? It's not the head priest who only can approach the altar of the Lord. He is the head of priesthood. Each one has access to the ark of the Lord, if you can envision that. Okay? Hallelujah. 
all the things in the heavenly realms are given to us, Paul said. You have everything. Most of the things in the ark are things yet reserved from heaven. In the ark with the things given to you. Things yet in heaven is imparted through Christ Jesus given to you. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want to break those limitations as if it seems a blasphemy to think about it. But actually, what it means to become holy? It means you're qualified to operate, to possess this kind of reality, this kind of equipping of the Lord. This anointing is about. Amen. Hallelujah. In sonship, full flesh sonship, is that you are full heirs with Christ Jesus for this kind of endowment. That's why the other priesthood, the other Melchizedek, its priesthood is so rich, rich, rich. It's a potential, uh, 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 potential to make you in Christ. Rich, rich, rich your, uh, is your inheritance in sonship. Now, today we're going to try to finish up, and hopefully I can do that. And uh, the next session is the preparation or perfection of a sonship through the seven spirit, which finalizes with the glory of the sons of God. The first point we're going to read that uh, is uh, Jesus High Priest of Her in John 17, leading from 14, all the teaching landed is a climax. It's a high priest prayer. And, um, but let's parse the title, the little, the little subtitle here. Preparation or perfection of sonship life. Preparation from the fear of the Lord to have the full flesh entrustment as a full representation or ambassador on earth of a heavenly economy, heavenly priesthood. Amen. Hallelujah. You are minister reconciliation. You can't reconcile something if you're not free and there already. Can you? <laughs> That's why God said upon Moses, I guess. Huh? Yeah? Think about it. So. Amen. Hallelujah. So we need to prepare for it. Also, we, this means you need perfected in it. So. The one who made the one who is made holy is making us holy into this holiness. That's the priesthood that is derived from our sonship in Christ Jesus. No, just for general public, we see here this teaching that said, "What's the scripture basis?" We're going to put a little bit in two chapter for Hebrew. That's the two chapters, nine words. But we do see him, the Christ, Jesus, who made for a little while lower than the angel, namely Jesus, because of the suffering's death, crowned with a glory or honor and honor, actually, so that by the grace of God, he may taste death for everyone. It is fitting for him, for whom are all things, the so whom all things, in bringing many sons to what? To this glory or this honor. To perfect the after the salvation through suffering. So Christ is a perfected or born prophet. We're actually kept. <laughs> so the profession is not sinless, am I? The profession means you grow, actually, you need to think about not begin with saying this whole profession to begin with. Amen? You can't be a bad corrupt seed to think you can be a tree. You must be a perfect seed, a good seed, in order to perpetuate a lineage of fruits after it. I hope you understand. Amen? Hallelujah. And you don't think about the second generation seed is imperfect. And then, hallelujah, all the fruition of the trees are imperfect. Everything about them is perfect. But in due season, in due season, hallelujah, as a profession, there are two designations, perfect in process and perfect in result. Amen, hallelujah. We need to recognize 
This Christ was perfected into a perfect result. Amen? Hallelujah. He went through perfect obedience into a discipline of perfection to be perfected as a perfect one suitable for the leadership or the headship that God see fit for him to discharge, amen, to assume a discharge, amen, for our, for our sake. So it's a finalized, basically. It's a finalized with the glory of the sons of God. It's be finalized. Is that making sense to you guys? Hallelujah. I hope we, you see that word clearly. In this slide from the sanctification, now let's look 2.11 Hebrew said, for both who is sanctified or made holy, and those who are sanctified or made holy, are all from one Father, of the same fatherhood, for, for which reason he's not ashamed to call them brothers. Shame there is that he don't think it's robbery, don't think dishonorable, as in the beginning said, he don't think it's a robbery for him to forego his glory to lower himself as a man so that he can become the pattern, become the we for us to be prophetic sons. Amen? Hallelujah. He didn't grasp it. So, so in that letting go and yielding God the process of profession, he opened the way for us to be prophetic or made holy or sanctified in the same pattern life. Amen? Hallelujah. And that is Jesus' prayer in John 17 is about. Let's turn to it. John 17. Hallelujah. I'm so sorry. I apologize for my formal tune of teaching because this session is a little bit formal for me. I want to make it formal in terms of teaching. That's why I will bounce around the scriptures. I will teach you most likely based on scripture. So the hearers of this teaching will never think we're teaching actual biblical knowledge, actual biblical revelation. It's all in the Bible, clear, loud, and <laughs> I mean, it's on the page. So, <laughs> what do you want to say? <laughs> Is that making sense, guys? So, he prayed for the disciples and not of this world. God keep them safe from in the world. Then, he particularly prayed for the glorification. He says, The glory give to me, give to them, Father. You know, so keep them in the world, for they are not this world, don't belong to the world. And then he said, I pray the Holy Spirit will come to help them out. But also he said at the same time, he equipped them, said my teaching will sanctify them. They follow my teaching, I will give them my teaching, right? So if the teaching is good to me, I give to them. We can see interesting, um, uh, conversion to so this understanding that the teaching of the Word of God is never departed from the works of the Holy Spirit. It's the one and the same in Him. But it does differentiate in a way, even the teaching again to them ahead of time, their mind is not yet enlightened. Their eyes and heart not yet opened up. It requires the Holy Spirit to take the wheel of the mind, or the skill of the mind, so you can see it, even teaching or giving. I mean, I hope that is your common way to enter deep understanding God's will. Amen? Hallelujah. So, the Spirit is meant to be actuated in a particular order. And he was talking to the Apostle, then, right? So, this whole thing is a priestly contest, it's a positive operation if we are on earth. We can call apostolic on earth, heaven is called the priesthood. So, on earth as in heaven. So, that being said, um, in 17, 17, 17 of John's Gospel, that it sanctified them in the truth. Your word is the truth. Now, what truth there means? We need to rescue the word from a common stock of man's understanding of truth. Oh, interesting. I heard somebody <laughs> just trying to give us the truth. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Truth. 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 Truth.
Even in Greek word means what is real. Okay? And you know, what's real? This divided the sun top a little bit, the challenge of human understanding. Today's advanced or theoretical physics physics. They don't think this world is real. Quantum physics has defined the lead challenge that our consciousness some said it's actually the world is a reflection of consciousness. So at least our consciousness play a part in determining what's the real in our perception of the world. So in a sense, the world you see and perceive is a subject to you to a certain extent. <laughs> Decide you by you the observer at the we how you observe it. They play a role in determining what reality means for you. Get my point? Simply speaking, a bat look at the dark night <laughs> different than you. <laughs> Because they don't use eye to see. They use what the so location. Okay, there you go. <laughs> location. So now, so yeah, to detect the world. So the ways of looking at the world totally different than you. Amen? Hallelujah. Totally different than you. So think the same way. You I hope you're not the bad, <laughs> but you have a strong ability to detect in the world even the natural. But you have different ways to detect it. No more, more than that, man can only hear certain spectrums of frequency. Okay? Sound, basically, with sound waves, right? So, but man is going to hear it a different way. <coughs> Detection, sonar, amen? So, yeah, today's modern defense system is based on the sonar system. So, I'm just telling you, certain things stare your face. It's a challenge, some conventional ways of thinking of reality. Mm -hmm. What is real to you? <laughs> What's real to you? Amen? Hallelujah. What's real to you? It depends on your perception. One is your capacity of perception, even the natural endowment. The second, the perception itself, it determinedly decided is a, by your existence. The I am. <laughs> As it gives some uh, in turn, some challenge, some conventional thinking. So in quantum physics, it's called the superposition. Okay, superposition will be a zero and one at the same time. You don't know unless you determine, decide what it is. Okay, so I'm talking about those things. Basically, the reality supersedes the manifest reality, and you have position in that. So if you have position that you are free from a manifest reality, same to you, okay? So you can choose, in a sense, which reality you want to be. Now that's a freedom in a certain regard, okay? Then in the turn, in the opposite, with, there's a slavery, right? You are conditioned in scope, uh, envelope but the reality you determined to be. So what is real? What is real for the lens of your observation will decide what's real to you in a certain way. I'm not saying thoroughly that, okay? But Jesus Christ tried to open our minds to say, the spirit, what I thought is the ultimate truth. Is the ultimate order of reality. There's a transitional world going to wrap up about my world. Well, my word, my teaching will never pass away or remain. Now, that is shared security. Amen? Hallelujah. Shared security. <laughs> it is not just um, perpetual. It has its own garment, its own ways of honor. Is our own ways of um, application, a certain order. Am I so? So that the teaching Christ is given to the church is a mighty one. It's a mighty one. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Angel, demons, this age, the coming age, cannot stop you to attain unto this reality. And the church is called, appointed to dispense this manifold wisdom, even the powers and heavy realms, and those things determined, the decided, the role this this present world, excuse me, this present age, will have to yield to it. And that is demonstrated and testified as true, as real, through the Russian crisis and his ascension. Amen? Hallelujah. So, in 19 now, uh, for their six, for whose six? Very interesting. But everybody, so we need to contextualize this a little bit. Yes, maybe for every believer eventually, but we need to contextualize this with the Jesus by high priest position and his enlistment of the apostle to a priestly operation. This is a new comment I give to you. So I sanctify myself instantly applied to sanctify sinners from the sin, all make holy his brothers into the Father's business. And I'm Hallelujah. I highly recommend to think the next of the the, the latter one is the writer's contest here. Amen. Hallelujah. Now that challenge across the ages of man's interpretation of the scripture. Okay? So yeah. For their six Hebrews book clear interpreters. <coughs> I sanctify myself. That this soul also may be sanctified in truth. In truth. That is the living operation. If the order comes down from God, or the dispensation of God's grace in the order of step from heaven, every blessing the heavenly place is ours. Paul said. So that is high priest prayer prove that we can have this glorification as a sound in the body of Christ as in the church. Then look at the similar concept Paul translated in a different way, with a different set of uh, terminology or concepts. In Paul, it's, we're going to expand from Romans 8. This is again going to challenge some conventional wisdom, okay? So Romans 8. But it's not supposed to surprise the most of us because it's a topic we have been repeated again and again. And brother Tim has adequately expounded those things along the lines of well. Romans 8, part of the sonship. 7, part of the enslavement of a man on his own nature, or corner nature, on the power of sin and death. And it's a miserable being that it meant <laughs> to be condemned. So, in a sense, he's a slave himself, slave his own nature. And where is the solution? Where is the freedom? Where is the outcome for this misery? And then in 725, Paul exclaimed when he know that he is set free in sonship through Christ Jesus. The son set free is free indeed. 25, thank to be God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, on the one hand, I myself with my mind am serving the law of God, but on the other with my flaws of sin. And therefore, there now, because of Christ and his sonship has revealed to us in our inner man as a son of God, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Hello, hello, hello. There's no condemnation for those in Right, Jesus. It's not God condemning you, not Jesus condemning you, I tell you, if you feel this in. Christ wants you to become a son. The Father in heaven wants you to have every privilege, every provision to Christ is to be made a son. That is his desire for you. When you believe the message sonship. In two says for the law, there's a law, there's an order. There's a righteousness. 
the law of the spirit life in Christ is will set you free. Is free from any law, all laws, or free from one set of laws, treated as a base kernel person, sweet and tormented on the powers and death, whose ruler is the devil, into the brilliant, wonderful kingdom of Christ Jesus, enlightens the sun. And then made the righteous living, live a life righteous of peace and joy in the Holy Spirit as a son of God. Follow that pattern, follow those principles or elementary principles of that kingdom. Element is not fundamental, it's actually a thing you can never do without the mental alien. Amen, hallelujah. It's like the ground you stand, the air you breathe. Amen, hallelujah. The sun you see the rising. It's the way how it operates. So, the Lord of the Spirit of God, you conform to that, learn that, find the freedom and then comfort in that. That is your maturity and the attaining of righteousness from above. And it's through the Holy Spirit, assumption. The firm goes on follow that this way this law of spiritual life or righteousness from above you are led by the spirit those are led by spirit in this book said well in 14 said well, those all those who are led by the spirit of god these are what sons of god and the fourth don't forget the 15 that it and if you have not received the spirit for you have not received the slavery leading to a spirit again that it condemn me to death, am I? But if you have received spirit adoption, that word actually appointment should be appointed to be heirs. As a song by which you cried out, Abba Father, Abba Father, in the May 1st, because you know you're born of him. But this father explanation is a waking up your full flesh right as the ready heir with Christ is in the household of your heavenly father. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, here I come to do thy will. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. If we say that, then with that we recognize glory. In 18 say, For I consider the suffering of this present time present age are not worthy to compare with the glories that are revealed to us. Why? It's very interesting to read the context here. So, the ashes of Lord in the creation was eagerly for the revealing of the sons gone. That's a glorification. That is a pause understanding of Jesus' priestly intercession in John 17. That glory, that honor, is not we have glorified body. It's that endowment or appointment into priesthood or full sonship. So we can, we can understand adoption of sonship, born again, all those who need to be rescued from a poor interpretation. Okay? It cannot do without the priesthood. From heaven. So it's a possible ministry. The possible ministry is not to put any church in order. Possible ministry is to impart the culture from above, the order from above on earth that is in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <coughs> so it's not doing miracle signs, wonders. It brings this teaching, as Jesus said, the truth, the reality to be populated, replanted. In the hearts of who receive it, like a seed into the tree of life, as we hinted earlier in the set of teaching. And this is the hope we have. And this is the hope, don't disappoint. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's look at the concept, and then go on for the first fruits now. So in 22, but we know that the whole creation groans and suffers a pain of childbirth. Together until now. And not only this. 
for all us who we are ourselves. Having the first fruits of the Spirit. Do they have the fruits or not have the fruits? <laughs> they already had it. Yet still grooming. Why? Because of different levels of freedom. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. Even ourselves groom within ourselves. Are they happy people? If you groom me? <laughs> Are you blissful people? Free from all trouble, sin, prosper in every way, tell the world how to run. I hope we really wake up from a shallow, distorted, and false Christianity, from a false gospel, false promises, false hopes, man's foolish, darkened desires and expectations. Man is still full of himself, full of the world. But you have to be set yourself apart from that into a holy life that's sanctified by the truth that is teaching the Word of God. And that means to be the first fruits offering. Okay? You're the first fruits of the Spirit, waiting eagerly for our adoption of sons, the redemption of our body. So the adoption of sons, the redemption of body, another one, first fruits of the Spirit. Am I? Now, the soul groaning and the body yet to catch up. So there's a hint in Paul's understanding the composition of the man or the make of us as a man, even a spiritual man. We can see the duality, but the, truly we are more than a bridge of a heaven to earth. We're also the whole economy of a human history. All the Christian stories need to play in us. Amen. Just like the Son of Man, he as a man went through all the trouble of the world to become a salvation for all the Christians as well. So at that, the same lily, we enter into the suffering Christ to become the sharers of this hope and minister this economy. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and in this hope, 24 says, in, for in hope we have been saved. You say what? From sin? Or say it in hope? And this hope is saved now in hope. <laughs> but for hope what is already saved. That's why the deposit of the Spirit is the first fruit of the Spirit. If we hope for what we don't say, with the perseverance, we eagerly wait for it. So, in this slide, let's move on to the next point in the notes, the Lordship or Headship Crisis, which is the brief you mentioned the concept of first fruits. Okay? So now, turn with me to chapter 2, I believe, in Colossians. Oh, I'm sorry, the 15th chapter, 1st Corinthians, okay? Then repeat again the concept in Paul's mindset. <coughs> Speaking resurrection, crisis, being the internal hope, the coming of the kingdom, the ramping or summing up of all things under Christ into the kingdom of God. In 15th chapter of First Corinthians, I got a new Bible, so bear with me, I need to find the word in the house. Kim may help out. Oh, 20 actually, 15, 20. Uh, let's start with actually 19. If we have hope in Christ in this life only, will of all man most be pity. But now Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who are asleep. Now I ask you, is this one person? Christ since only man, Christ, the man, Jesus. But why he did not see Jesus? Is Paul not included as the first fruits? In writing this letter? That's very interesting to think about it. Or included. The first fruit of those who are asleep. Amen? Hallelujah. 
We have the first group of room inside. Is it dead from the world? Or still waiting for his body to be glorified? We set it free. Now, so he is in Christ Jesus as members of the body, right? He's the head. Christ is in the head. For since a man made death, 21, for since uh, by a man came death, by a man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam, is this one man only Jesus, a mortal man, or a man of Christ? That's very interesting to think about it, okay? So, questions for you to think. What the anointed one means? Very important to understand that when Paul intentionally mentioned the Christ without Jesus attached to it, he meant for something. Oftentimes, it includes the church. Okay, so the church in this light is not popular or historical church, rather the church with a heavenly entrustment who are equipped and capable made the manifold wisdom of God known to all creation. The church, the firstborn, the church has uh, rallied or gathered before the throne of God in the heavenly realms. Means it's become a priesthood, then, right? Already. So let's go on. But as in Adam all die, also in Christ all who made the life, each in his own turn. Christ, the first fruits of the death, those who are Christ and his coming. Huh. And then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to the God of the Father, as he abolished all his rule, all for the power. For he must reign until he put all his enemies on the feet, the last enemy that we abolish, the death. Anyway, so I want to continue. You can read it yourself. But the concept of the first fruits is very clear in here. The first fruits are hurting harvest the Psalms. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. With that being said, let's consider the concept of firstborn. There's no better chapter, uh, verses to consider the firstborn, as I hinted, the first fruits. It's the imagery of the tree, the okay? tree of life. And the concept firstborn would be actually Adam. I mean, the human being was created to be a son of God in, in the original flag of God. But turn with me to Colossians, the book Colossians, we see two firstborns. Concept two firstborns. With firstborn, you will see two deaths, obviously. That's in two chapters. Let's see. I'm sorry, actually in one chapter. In five, 15 said, Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. So that one point of time. The firstborn of all creation. For by him, by him, all things are created. Wow. In the beginning, the word, the word fulfilled. Both in the heavens and on earth, visible, invisible, that it means, you know, what invisible means, am I? So, whether thrones or domains or rulers or authorities, we are met to make this manifold wisdom Christ is known to them. All things have been created through him and for him. So that's a consuming, a, a ensuing order, spring from his being first born before all creation. Okay? It's before all things, in him all things hold together. And then, Paul began to change the next concept of the first one. That he also is the head of the body, the church, is the beginning, the first born from what? The dead. <coughs> Hallelujah. Think about it. So this is the resurrection. The first this creation gonna come to an end it means swallowed by death, swallowed up by death. But you are redeemed from them. You are spared or set apart from them for eternal life. 
So that is a firstborn. He's a firstborn from among the dead. So that he himself will come to be first place in everything. So again, he's a firstborn for the new creation. Amen? Hallelujah. In the old creation, through the devil, through man's failure to obey God, to believe in Jesus Christ, in a sense, and he fulfills the blessing of heirship, of sonship. Amen? Hallelujah. Then Christ has to come back to the creation to revision everything, to revise everything. He becomes the last Adam, the final Adam. The real man, the true perfect man. So he then bring everything again in redemption. That's why in the Bible also talk about the many firstborns are corrupted. Esau was the firstborn, but Jack but God loved. It's a picture of our, the body of Christ. Even we are weaver, even in our willing, but we long a whole to be redeemed and glorified in our hope, amen, of a righteous life. And God's pleased with that, then He will crack at us, He will change us, He make us <laughs> representation in the household. Amen. Hallelujah. So, the second firstborn. So, in 19, say, for it was the Father's good pleasure for all forms to dwell in Him. Dwell in Him, rest upon Him. All forms rest upon Him. Hallelujah. To reconcile all things. Basically, here's the concept of a dwelling. Concept resting. Now, I have many things to say about lordship, headship, but I'm going to be very succinct about it. The concept now turn to a concept of royal priesthood. It more than just any priesthood, it's a, it's a royal priesthood. Let's look at Aaron's priesthood. It's a royal priesthood or a foreshadow of a kind of royal priesthood. <coughs> and then royalty was more visibly, historically speaking, revealed through David's interaction and Damned and uncle and the four members of priesthood, then the continuity in the service in the temple of Solomon. Am I so? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, that is a royal priesthood in a sense. So the setup is in the wilderness through Aaron and his sons in the time of Moses in the wilderness is a foreshadow of a priesthood, the final fulfillment. That a son of God, where Solomon is, is able to lead a priesthood, install a priesthood, or inherit a priesthood into the service of the temple. Am I boring you? I'm teasing you or exciting you. So, this is a temple picture now. So, royal priesthood to do with temple. Okay, so, amen. That means the kingship is uh, restored. Okay, so. <coughs> Uh, we can say extras and fast forward, but uh, we don't want to talk too much about it. So, but I wanted to turn to the key scriptures, and you can refer to those scriptures yourself. Okay, this um, set of teaching, unfortunately, it cannot be lengthy. Can only be for succinct. Now, turn with me to First Peter in two chapter. So he was a cornerstone. He meant to build the temple of the Lord. And same time, he becomes a priest with God, with his uh, companion sons. So that is the concept here. And you become that holy nation. In form, in coming to him as a, to a living stone, <coughs> which has been rejected by men, but is a choice and precious in the sight of God. You also, as the living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house for the holy priesthood to offer up a spiritual sacrifices accepted to God through Jesus Christ. So, are you a priest without service or meant to offer holy sacrifices? A quick note on this. 
to be servile in the period itself. So turn with me to Romans 15, 15. So that's Peter's contest. <coughs> Look at 15, 15, Paul's contest. Romans 15, 15. Because see, this is always a pastor and a mission, or endowment. Said it. But I have written to your bodily to you, a sign for so as to remind you again, because grace, as a priestly grace, or possibly grace, was given to me from God, to be, we're clear, a minister of Christ, that is a priest, okay? Christ is to the Gentiles, ministering or serving as a priest for the gospel of God, so that in my offering, whose offering? Oh, Paul has uh, audacity said in my offering, huh? Very interesting. We're possessive. We're dishonorable. <laughs> Blasphemous, we think about it. <laughs> It's not your church. It's God's church. Well, hold on. <laughs> Nothing we own the church, per se. I'm speaking about Paul take ownership of his entrustment and want to be a faithful steward and, and productive minister of him who diligent about it. My offering of the Gentiles may become acceptable. Paul, he made us a thought sanctified through the teaching the word of God sanctified by the Holy Spirit at the same time so it's always a possibly or priestly contest now that being said as you can see in Peter back to Peter second chapter first Peter so offering up spiritual sacrifices Paul was talking about in his Gentiles, but Peter is offering, said, well, in the heavenly realms, am I right? Offer spiritual sacrifices except to God through Jesus Christ. For this contains the scripture, you can read more, stone rejected, become a cornerstone. Why they stumble over this cornerstone? Because it's disobedient to the word. Preceding chapter, Paul, uh, Peter is speaking about the teaching of the Word of God, the internal life, that all things will pass away like a grass, but the Word of God will make you born again and never pass away. <coughs> and with this doom, they were also pointed. Interesting. But you, you, God's chosen people, those who believe the Word of God, in a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, that you may proclaim you have a job to do, your business to take care of, proclaim the excellencies of Him, when called you out of the darkness into the marvelous light. You once was not a people, but now you know you are people of God. And now receive mercy, but now you have received mercy. And then, then speaking, acting as a stranger alien to the world. But consider yourself as a royal member, God's also. So, I hinted and expanded on the concept of adoption of the sonship earlier through the exposition of Romans 8. We will refrain from really further it, but I want you to understand and re examine anytime the word adoption with appointment or designation, they are almost a similar contest. Okay? So sonship is not in this light, it's not born again, but rather is the appointment for priesthood service in heaven and appointment into a, a, a positive service on earth. So that's the work of God, the city in trust of the church. Now that's the last point. It's the work of God the Father in trust to the Son 
to bring many sons to glory. Amen. Hallelujah. And then we use a imagery here. Is again the fruitful tree picture. Okay, it's a seed. Is weed to the pattern, or to the pattern, sorry, and um, we are to mature or be perfected into the mind of Christ, into the wings of God, if you are, in the mind of the anointed one, the anointed one, whole offered on a certain mindset, a certain viewpoint, and that is Christ as a father business taught to the early church, the teaching of the word of God. In a possibly ministry. Okay, that meant to produce some harvest of fruits, the firstborn, first fruit, the fruits of harvest, headship. When you understand this, is headship is the most hierarchical construct. Okay, headship is not merely hierarchical construct, it's a function with a placement for honor and authority. There's some things are hugely missing in through the history and treat as a norm today not with absurdity and alarm of each of the church through the ages especially catholics okay headship and then called the Wuha, whatever in those kind of uh, names and then hallelujah but headship is not <laughs> is not a centralized placement in the earth a come corner of the earth that we represent God in heaven. Peter was in Jerusalem and laid down, scattered in the Gentile world as well. Paul was in the Gentile world to begin with as a pastor, am I? So, but they represent Christ's headship in their own right, in their own life, through their life endeavors. As a song to go about the Father's business. So I want you to think about that. John, James, many apostles do the same. So, is the church have many heads? Amen. Hallelujah. Or they have one head, but many representations. Amen. Many songs represent the same father. Is that so strange about it? <laughs> or right for yourself? Amen. Hallelujah. Are you? Is this something to be? Only stay in the top level or view or support your pattern life passed on generation after generation. Amen. How they want to think about it. Okay, so yeah. It's a uh, only gonna be early church have it. A later comers, we are so unlucky, we're never gonna have it. Or it's always the tenure as the baseline of what it means to be a church on earth for God to begin with. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's something is a contentiously argued through the ages. People have strange propositions. But for Christ's ministry on in heaven, come on earth, and is in earth, it must be apostolic. That means that it means we must represent God's culture for our fellowship, not ourselves, but with the Father's Son. Yeah, that's anointing what it means. Okay? That's a grace what it means. <coughs> So it's not a strange concept. It's all through the Bible. You can't really bypass that to think you know all the interpret scriptures and the whole to organize the church and function the church or function at the church. The church, by the way, is not the historical church. All the in gathering, a collaboration of uh, those who confess is Christ. The church is the ones who are called ecclesia. Ecclesia means. Being appointed to represent and designated as a, in official capacity, as in the beginning of the rest, right? To discharge a governmental entrustment. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's a positive by nature. So the church, firstborn, is apostolic, okay? So, if you will. Is that making sense to you guys? <laughs> the term church has just been so twisted. So though. twisted, yes. Yeah, mm. it, it, it can't be. You can't there's no room for this definition mm. at all. Where the ecclesia is like mm. a, a ruling class. Yeah. But for our audience sake, for those who believe <laughs> and study scripture, we need to clarify that, okay? We're not challenging people. We try to rescue a definition, mm -hmm. rescue the apostolic teachings, 
to the biblical scriptures and okay, so let's um, now talking about in this representation of this lordship this this mind of christ we begin to go about the fast this in the mind of christ what it means we need to reproduce am i right? reproduce we also need to learn to really exercise representative power representational and reproductive authority as a royal priesthood the sons how to do that we recognize the lord prayer give a clear template on that Father, hallowed be thy, Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth and in heaven. And the, you know, earlier we handed, and, and Christ gives the pattern. Through so the Passover time, his teaching, then later the apostle expounded. There is a pattern to this. Amen? Hallelujah. That is what we call in the days come. I hope we'll have a full opportunity to expand kingly and priestly grace and wisdom and operation would look like which should be tied on to call the ministry of the other Melchizedek. It's a royal priesthood. It's a royal and uh, heavenly enforcement. But that being said, we see the Lord prayer is not just for any kind of believer to pray. It was obviously as the entrustment to a priesthood, to apostles, to representation God's people on earth that is in heaven. Amen. You can't see that as a new convert is capable of doing that. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't ask any believer to forgive your sins in God's stead. It doesn't work like that. God, by His mercy and by His allowance for our ignorance, and this could be said, he may allow your sin to be forgiven based on the purity of heart. But that's not should be norm. That should be the norm. That should not be the order of the day. Amen. Hallelujah. Is that making sense to you? So yeah. Now let's look at representation. So we understand through Hebrews of book, I don't have a chance to really expound. But the order is in heaven. The man, the priesthood assembly is in heaven. Now, fast forward to Hebrew. I don't want to expound. I just want you to study yourself. Hebrew 12, rather, team recently mentioned, expound a little bit. You can record that if you have the time. But this ministry or this teaching should it carry authority and with authority carry consequences. That's why the Bible tells, do not refuse to hear his words. Pay more attention. For it's better than angels' ministry. Amen. It's more important than Moses' ministry. More excellent. Right? So pay attention to the ministry of sons, to ministries. So this church seldom differentiate. Okay? Ministry of sons is a rarity in church existence through the history so we don't really differentiate it we always identify the Christ himself but we don't really conceptualize it's a church as a whole supposed to have okay so but that's the 12th chapter is all about or the book Hebrew is all about try to identify the meaning of assumption okay so in Christ Jesus in 12 to the two now said so you have come to mount Zion, and the city of the living god the heavenly where the heavenly jerusalem and the mirrors of angels and then to the general assembly or congregation or in gathering and the church of firstborn so the assembly and there's a church it's not the same thing. Okay? So, church of what? Of the firstborn. Those are things in your ready part to study. Okay? So, then the general assembly, are they all firstborns? Where could question to ask? Study a little bit. So, the church need to study, firstborn started, the general assembly, what it is. 
it definitely not the corner of the church. Say, like, come to our assembly, or if we foresee God's assembly. <laughs> Does that make sense to you? This is a heavenly assembly. So, who are enrolled, the word enrolled, enlisted, or named, and recorded as a name, you know? So, yeah. make sure your name are written in where? In heaven. Who are enrolled in heaven. And to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made it perfect. Oh, that's not the concept. Who are the spirit righteous who made it perfect? That's actually hinted in 11th chapter, speaking those before Christ. Am I? So, yeah. so we have three components, if you want, or three congregations in this one great ingathering. Angels, the saints fold, and then the church, and with it, the assembly that belong to Christ. Thank you about it for your departure. Okay, so, um, so we belong to this church, and only this church is can and should and will be in trust with the task. Let's turn to Ephesians, the book in. Oh. In two chapter, I believe. Maybe not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. In ten. In ten. This is a positive grace given to Paul. That is then somehow he can gather a church in the name of Christ. In eight, right now, sorry. But to me, the word list of all sins of grace given to preach to the entire the unsettled riches of Christ and to bring to light what is the administration. That's the word actually called dispensation. The administration of the mystery which for ages has been hidden in God who created all things. So that's a manifold wisdom of God. How manifold? Manifold. Within God may be known through the church. Who? Uh, through the church. To the rulers. To other human beings. Interesting. Okay. Paul's proposition for the church is very important. It's a heavenly one. To the rulers and the authority in the heavenly places. So, then settled. So we also see the next point is the positive grace ministry in the midst of the Church of Christ on earth. That is uh, obviously, I threaded it through my discussion, and then we know the Church, all those things trust with such a ministry must be faithful, prove be faithful, and effective with the ministry of service. That's a concept is a Paul's mind of speaking the mind of Christ. In continuity, in First Corinthians, now turn to fourth chapter, when he excellently expanded the wisdom man is a fully son to God, but the wisdom of God will give us the mind of Christ, will make the wisdom hidden through the ages known to us as sons for glory. Amen. Hallelujah. That is in second chapter, First Corinthians. Let's briefly touch this because we found wisdom here. Now we talk about lordship, representation of lordship, or the name God on earth as it's a body or as it's a ministry. You can't depart from the ministry of this wisdom. It's one of the same job. So one is an entrustment of authority, power from heaven. The other is your service. In turn, it is in charge. After all, for entrustment, if we are. So, in 6 said, We do speak wisdom on those who are mature. The wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of all the rulers of this age who are passing away. But we speak God's wisdom in the mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory. Now, you need to rescue the word predestination here as well. <laughs> Because 
the predestined year is the word targeted. <laughs> okay. The ones who know the wisdom of God, that's what's predestined. Am I making sense to you? Their name are written in heaven, that's what it means. So, not to any believer. So the argument of free will predestined concerning any believer of salvation is a false construct to begin with. It's a misreading of the book of Paul. That's the speaking about dismantling many false contracts. Sometimes we think the fundamental doctrines of Christianity actually they are foolish fabrication. I'm sorry, they make me upset because through the ages, God's evil people, good hearted people, have been wrestling in the jungle forever. <laughs> and no end. Better than here, they try to prove a point, but we never get a secured, funded, on the right place in the foundation, in the essence of God's operation as His chosen people. While we busy with all those things, we forfeit the true entitlement and true entrustment. Amen. Hallelujah. Something has to take for us to recover the wrong the city. Amen. Hallelujah. The wrong the foundation. May the Lord bless us. We're capable of doing that. Yeah, but I invoke and I pray that you will have a desire in your own heart to rise up to take hold of this. This wisdom. In 8 said, the wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood, for if they had understood, they would not have crucified the Lord of honor or glory. Hallelujah. But, thus as it written, things which eyes have not seen and ears are not good, which has not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who. We did on him, love him. That is a priestly posture and position. Okay, wheat. Wheat means a serve before the throne of God. Okay, for our, for unto us, God revealed them through the Spirit. For the Spirit such all things in the depths of God. In 16, said, in 16, the same chapter, for who has known the mind of the Lord? Who can be a counselor? As a son in the name of the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Who can share his headship? I am Christ. Are you supposed to mature to have the full knowledge of Christ Jesus? To know the Father's will, to be one with him. He abiding you and you abiding him. You <laughs> serve him, do his will. You have the renewed mind, transformed ability as a spiritual son to know the good, perfect, uh, pleasant, good, pleasant, perfect will of God. That's here I was talking about. Before that, your mind is still darkened, yet to be sanctified or yet to be glorified. But we're supposed to know. 16 said, For who has known the mind of the Lord? That we, he will instruct him, that he will consult him. He need your counsel. Mm -hmm. In case we the counsel. You see the mistranslation here? But we have the mind of Christ. Oh, that reconcile, instruct him. <laughs> no, we have the mind of Christ. Basically, includes this heavenly counsel. No. With that kind of entrustment, comes all discipline and great responsibility in for speaking in Paul speaking the sediment for one to regard when he how he won't be received by the minister the second how he want to hold himself accountable in the midst of all things especially before God let's see this stewardship this faithfulness this accountability enforcing this Humility, this we are counting faithful, meaningful, protecting God is art. Actually, it's a way. It's something I long to do. It part also belong to discipleship, belong to maturity. Think about it. It should never be merely individually superior to God. Only the Spirit holds me accountable. 
really not. So, or in a sense, the corporate way. Am I Hallelujah. I mean, Acts 15 gives a perfect picture of a whole God through the Spirit made human vessels, imperfect vessels, like Peter, James, Paul, Barnabas, come to the leadership of the Headship of Christ through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I mean, it's a perfect case study for us to understand how unity of the church and the will of God carried out through imperfect or yet to be perfect vessels as is the church. Amen? Hallelujah. But let's talk about individual accountability or righteous stewardship. In 4 said, 4 chapter from the beginning, 1st Corinthians, that let man regard us in this manner. This is how you to be represented, how you to be received. This is where serious mentor, when Jesus sent disciples out, he said, if man don't receive you in the name of my representation, that's his, uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, right? so, then you are free to leave. Shake up the dust of your, your garments and pronounce a woe on the body. That's the living beast. And that was it. We're terrible, thinking about it. We're judgmental, man. <laughs> so, 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 that's the Paul we're talking about here, okay? So, so he, he wanted himself to receive in the proper honor, in the proper way. That is representational. He is representation as a servant minister of God, Christ, and stores the mystery of the wisdom, am I, of God. So he has something to tell you. In this case, moreover, it's required a steward that when they found the trustworthy. The key word what? Trustworthy, faithful, trustworthy. But to me, it's a very small thing that I may be examined by you. I mean, that's it. Very sharp. <laughs> you, Corinthian, <laughs> you as a baby, scale or run, you know, you need to be taught. So anyway. He is he, he's, he's very upset with them continuous to opinions in this <laughs> or by any human cause. In fact, I don't even examine myself because he tried to enlist gems or Barnabas or Paulos. I'm not sure what I said. Tried to be their backup. Said, hey, Paul, we're not sure you really read God enough for that sentence. So, that's a human court they were talking about. I don't think it's a secular court, okay? In four said, for I am conscious of nothing against myself, yet I am not by this acquitted. But the one that, who examines me is what? Is the Lord. You stand before the Lord. Now I want to highlight this too. It's not Paul refraining from responsibility. Rather, he said, I have a, a standing before the throne of God. And I operate from there on earth as in heaven. Now this is not imaginative. We know the story in Acts. Some were speaking about the seven or eight brothers trying to cast demons out and they were chased down by the demon. <laughs> and the demon proclaimed or exclaimed, said, oh, I know Jesus. I know for the Paul. Who are you guys? <laughs> so Paul was not knowing heaven. That's for sure. So, so that's very interesting to see the stewardship, okay? Or shepherdship. The same word should say. Okay, just in order to highlight that, because we have some time, so I'm going to take the chance to fill in some scriptures. That is in First Peter again. Uh, you can see, gradually, when we talk about the headship, representation of God's name in sonship, I begin to use apostolic teaching more and more, because that's how they operate it. That's what Christ is instructing them. So, is that, uh, yeah, first Peter, in five chapter, he said this, it's, a, it's stewardship, it's a pattern of himself as a leader, as is a, a representation of Jesus' name among the church. In five chapter, in the beginning, excuse me, first Peter, five one, said the four, is all the elders among you 
as your fellow elders, a witness of the suffering of Christ. Now, that's very interesting. What is the witnessing? Is it this crucifixion? The suffering of the anointed one. That's a part of it, for sure. That should be very important in the message. But is that suffering of Christ? As the girl is shared, is enter, share the suffering of Christ. Speaking of glory of those who suffer in this name. Is that not sonship? Now that sonship, is that not with a priesthood? It's very important to understand that the glory and the suffering here is a word contextualized in Paul's mind, in Peter's mind, not as we modern Christians think. So as a particular, also the glory that is revealed. So that is a shepherdship. That's the context wants to introduce to invoke the awareness of the local leadership saying, here, guys, this is what we're doing together. I have fellow workers with you. Shepherds, as another title, if you will. The shepherds of flock of God among you, exercising what they're supposed to do. Why have they become a shepherd or elders? They exercise their oversight. Now something very important because that is a abused or misused or misconjoined through church history by incident or denomination of churches or certain, I don't know, offshoot of Christianity in whatever fashion. Especially in this day called apostle movement, whatever, you know. Uh, uh, team, what do you call it? Called NDR or M and some N R is that right? A E R and some I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> Something sorry. Um, unsavvy and abusing and distorted way understanding those things. I mean, it's terrible. So model the pure water of God restoration of certain things. But you cannot deny the abuse, the misuse aside, the modeling aside, we should know there's a pure stream. And there is a legit and genuine operation should be restored back to the church. That's a proper oversight. Am I? That's is contextualized shepherdship or discipleship. Now I don't talk about the movements or construct the structures. Okay, I'm talking about God wants to do something in the church, and there is some restoration. The tenure has to be restored. This is not New Testament pattern, but a church of pattern speaking. This is a a direct easy force of heavenly order, grace from above to the willing people, enlightened people. Mm. Can we reconcile that more clearly? You are not the fulfillment of the hope of the past. You are the fulfillment of the age-long desire of God directly from heaven. Man, hallelujah. You don't borrow from your past. The toolboxes. The dried up streams. For your resourcefulness. <clears throat> you should directly receive all the blessings. In Christ is from heaven. As a sonship ministry. I want to make that cut for you guys. I want to also propose this kind of headship, representation, will be uncompromising. It don't yield to anybody. Because it meant to sum up everything. Easy for something will represent God's grace and intention for the end time church. This is meant to sonship and restoration thereof will purify a holy bride. It will be a fulfillment of the age-long desire of God for his people in our particular time where all things begin to come to an end. Amen, hallelujah. We come to the final age of mankind, the creation thereof, of God's work. There's a river going to run more than endlessly to the internal sea, but it will be the only reward that allowed Rome 
in God's design in the days to come for Christianity. All streams of Christianity are going to run dry and die in the wilderness of man. And that is a more than my word that is a heavenly revelation given to me many years ago. And I pray you have found the living river of God's life in a living way. And I'm so encouraged by some of us. Today I was talking to Benji. Sorry to narrow down a little bit personal. Or, or, and Noah recently. This is today. And others, many of you, are really rising up, take ownership of this toilet. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. God don't need a multitude. God needs a few. Okay? He will not have a multitude to begin this restoration. He will trust the word faithful few. And I pray you'll be gathered up and erected by God. The Son of God in this way. He doesn't care what happened to you in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. But you're going to be a pillar in God's house, in Jesus' name. And that's reproductive. That's what the mission is supposed to be. We are more than supposed to be representational. We are supposed to be increasing, reproducing this way of life through discipleship. So that's why Jesus Christ calls the internal father, uh, in progenitor, that's translated properly, of the internal life. Progenitor, father, progenitor, okay? A giver of life, basically. Is a uh, internal life. He becomes the word of life. His ministry is a word of internal life. Amen. Hallelujah. His teaching is uh, from eternity and for eternity. Amen. Suddenly, you know what internal mean? Let's think about again, because eternity has nothing to do with time. Okay. Time is a created entity. Time is a created uh, reality for you. So meant to produce something that prove a case. Eternity must exist. Eternity is a lie and increasing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to tell you my understanding eternity per se. But eternity is not a perpetual time. So that's my point. Eternity has nothing to do with time. So most of the Christian, especially on mind, you know, people of the popular culture will tell you eternity has a great to do with time, you know, you are not going to die. So I want to challenge you, eternity will manifest in time, okay? Will decidedly direct the, the direction and the content time, but eternity is about and beyond time. Amen? Right. That's internal means. Okay? So it's not a perpetual uh, time. There's no timeline. Anybody? Well, a good way to put it would be when you're looking a point of view. Again, point of view. Okay? You have the circle. If you look at it from a cat shadow, a 2D, you see a worship line on the plane 2D. Okay? But if that circle goes through a cycle, I mean, like this circle can circle around through this 2D. I mean, you can only see the touching point, one point. Imagine that thing. Then you only have one point. I mean, the whole circle surrounds you, and if you uh, observe that touching point, and that's where 2D is spectrum, you only see a movement. You know, you see endless movement. There's only one point. <laughs> All you think is never moved. Nothing moved. Actually, the whole circles are moving. Does that make sense to you? When you make that circle, more than projecting a, a line, you make a circle run around on the surface of a 2D. What are going to happen? You end this timeline, end this straight, straight line. I mean, end this. Okay. If you want to. Depends on the way you want to decide how that circle interacts with the 2D surface and how you want to position yourself as an observer for that interception. Okay? 
I'm just giving more than the simple illustration to tell you. you when you think about reality and relationships, you better be sure you understand that you are the right for observe a position to observe the right reality, allow for you to observe. Most of the men is not allowed to enter eternity. They're never capable to give a chance to look from an internal point of view of humankind or human history or timeline. Therefore, it's very hard for you to understand eternity side the timeline creation. I'm not saying your life is fixed. I'm only saying there is a different point of view to look at the history of creation and then there are every life, the relations with God. We then, when thinking about Christ's teaching, Paul said to you, rescue from a scattered, disabled reality, okay? An observer form, freed from this bondage or this restriction to be in a position with the Father the creator of all things and creator for time, creator of everything in the solid world, and hold everything together, and you given internal life. More than you receive an eternal life, you are given the chance as a representation of him to sow the seed and take care of the growth of eternal life in others. So discipleship is such a wonderful, glorious entrustment and with that, we're thinking about what the disciple is about. What the intention? Well, I'm going to use uh, mechanically or objectively. I mean, a circle with two D picture, a paper. But our discipleship, our relationship, is about the love of God, and the culture is ways. The two is the highest attention. It's defined who God is. For well, God is what? Is a love. And God is a weak. I mean, he's a sovereign, but it's not dead. He's not static. He's not motionless. He's a weak. He's always moving, always working, always reproducing, always increasing. He's full of power, full of uh, energy, not even a good word. You know? So he gave that to you. So he more than give you his person, he give you also this entrustment of a creative power. Amen. Hallelujah. That is indeed the glorious uh, inheritance. And we need to pay attention. That's why the book Hebrew said, let's sum up with that reading. It's five, 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 so. With that reading said, in 25, 12 chapter 7. Situate, 12 chapter Hebrew 25. Situate that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if those did not escape when they refused him who warned hunger, much less will we escape who turn away from him who warns us from heaven. And his word shook the earth, and but now he has a promise saying, Yet more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This is pressing in yet once more. Denotes the removing of those things which can be shaken as a pretty thing. So things do not belong to eternity. So then those things which cannot be shaken may remain. You belong to eternity. You not be shaken. The since we see a kingdom in a culture that cannot be shaken. That is a show gratitude by which we may offer to God accept our service or ministry with a reverence and awe, with the honor, the fear of the Lord, if you will. For our God is a consuming fire, and everything less than this glory, lesser than this nature, will be consumed. Not allowed to have access to Him. Except by Jesus, open the way. 
But as more than so access to him, we can abide with him. We can reign with him. Without, let's have a few of us. Uh, I always wanted to give a review. Uh, again, I think you will review of three major teachings. I think it's uh, necessary for pastor and ministry. Foundational teachings or elementary teachings, the gospel or the kingdom of God. And this teaching called the spirit of sonship in the seventh spirit ministry of sonship. Finally, the ministry of all that Moses is that in is a kingly and priestly wisdom and grace. With that being said, we will have Sister Rachel to pray for the Van Flaps. And have others to pray for us as well. Father, we do come together, Lord, to bless your holy name. Lord, to give you all the honor and glory for who you are, Lord. The word that you have given us, Lord. The life that we have as your sons in your spirit. Lord, love and willing heart that you have, Father to teach us, to lead us, and to guide us. Lord, I do pray for each heart that's gathered here, each mind, each life, Lord, that desires your fullness to reign in eternity with you, God. I pray for encouragement, for peace that passes our own understanding Lord. and for joy that goes far beyond any joys of this world as we truly consider the gift and the life that we've been given in you there is no reality that can touch it there is no truth outside of it may it be what is real to us what we take hold of with all that we are. May our lives be a testimony of love, of grace and mercy, of wisdom and of righteousness that can only come through you. We love you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Amen.